Good day, students. Welcome to our online learning discussion. This is your subject, English as a Second Language, and your teacher here, Miss Michelle Joy. Class, before we start with our online learning discussion, let's have a short review or recap of the last topic that we have discussed, which is about conversation. What is conversation? Conversation is a communication by two or more people, or sometimes with oneself, on a particular topic. The pulling of information, the sharing of interests, and the bringing together of ideas. So when you say conversation class, it is basically two people or more talking with each other about a certain situation. Now, class, let us proceed with our discussion this week, which is about vocabulary. But before that, let us read the words to learn that we will be encountering in our next slides. Please repeat after me so you can practice your speaking skills and reading skills even if you're just at home. Let's start reading now. Number one, word. Number two, tool. Number three, communication. Number four, meaning. And number five, vocabulary. Now, class, let us discuss these words one by one. What is the meaning of the word word? It is a unit used for purposes of human communication, materially representing a group of sounds possessing a meaning characterized by formal and semantic unity and a capacity for grammatical employment. The word may be described as the basic unit of language, uniting meaning and form. It is composed of one or more morphemes, each consisting of one or more spoken sounds or their written representation. So class, let us take the meaning of the word on the second paragraph, which is the word may be described as the basic unit of language. The more words or vocabulary we know, the more possibilities of us having a conversation or doing communication with other people. Number two, tool. Tool means instrument, device, apparatus, gadget, implement, utensil, appliance, puppet, mechanism, machine. But let's get the meaning of the word tool, which is instrument or device. It is an instrument for us to Communicate with other people. A word is a tool or an instrument for us to communicate with other people. An example of device or tools that we use in communicating with other people are mobile phones, computer, iPads, and tablets. Now let's proceed to the third word, which is communication. Communication means message, contact, report, intercourse, connection. Information, announcement, word, transmission, conversation. So communication class means message through contacting or conversing or talking with another people. Next word, meaning. What do you mean by the word meaning? It means what is intended to be or actually is. Express or indicated. Signification, import. The three meanings of a word. So when you say meaning class, it is intended to be or it is actually the expression of what you want to say or what you want a person understood. And the last word, vocabulary. It is all the words of a language. It is the sum of words used by, understood by, or at the command of a particular person. So these five words class are going to help us better understand our topic for today. Now class, let us discuss or read the objectives of our lesson for this week. The first one, students must be able to know what vocabulary is. The second one, students must be able to know the importance of vocabulary. Number three, students must be able to know the ways of improving vocabulary. Number four, students must be able to know the types of vocabulary. And the last one, students must be able to know ways of learning vocabulary. 
What is the best way to improve your vocabulary? If you ask this question to English teachers or other English learners, they will tell you the same thing. They'll tell you that the best way to build your vocabulary is to learn vocabulary in context by listening and reading a lot. And I completely agree with that. That is the best way to increase your vocabulary. So this is common sense, right? Everybody knows that. This topic is so boring. But there's a problem. Common sense is not common action. Everybody knows how to improve their vocabulary. But most people don't do it because they spend too much time on things like social media and funny cat videos. Now, if regular listening and reading is a common practice for you, then congratulations, you don't need to watch this video. But if it's not a common practice for you yet, let me convince you to start listening and reading on a regular basis. I'm going to share with you two other benefits you'll get from applying this habit. I'm also going to share with you some listening and reading materials at the end of this video. So let's get started. The first benefit you'll get is intuition. What is intuition? Well, let's say that you come across a multiple choice question about English grammar. You look at the choices and you know immediately what the correct answer is. You don't know the grammar rule that explains it. There's no reasoning behind it. It just feels right. That's intuition. It comes from taking in a lot of input by listening and reading. Unfortunately, some people don't appreciate the power of intuition. They learn vocabulary in a very strange way. They don't learn words in context. Instead, they find a list of words and memorize the meaning of each word one by one. Now, this seems like a good idea. They're learning a lot of new words in a short period of time. There's only one problem with this. It's stupid. Just because we know the meaning of a word doesn't mean that we can use it. It's not enough. We also need to know how the word is used. Now, I'm sure that you already know this, right? You're not one of those people. You already know that it's much better to learn vocabulary by listening and reading. Because when you do that, you're not only improving your vocabulary, but also grammar, sentence structure, and so on. And over time, you will become an independent learner. It means that you have the ability to improve your English without help from other people. And that's really cool. Now let's talk about the second benefit of this habit. The second benefit is an increase in brain power. Just like how a muscle needs physical exercise to become stronger, your brain needs mental exercise to grow as well. Regular listening and reading is a great mental exercise. It improves so many brain functions. When you listen to someone speaking, you have to stay focused. This improves your attention. And if they're speaking really fast, you also training your brain to process information faster, which leads to better comprehension. Reading is great too. It improves your memory. When you read a novel, you need to remember lots of details like the names of the characters, their backgrounds, the plot, and so on. Some books even increase your intelligence. Reading certain types of books improves the way you think. And these are just a few benefits. There are so many other benefits that I didn't even mention here. Now you might be thinking, why should I care about my brain power? Well, because it will play a huge role in your English language development, especially if you're trying to improve your spoken English. For non-native speakers like you and I, speaking English requires a lot of effort. It places great demands on so many cognitive functions like memory, attention, auditory processing, reasoning, and so on. So if you want to speak English well, you're going to need to have a strong, healthy brain with lots of power. And by the way, if you're not living in an English-speaking country, this habit is a must. And I'm speaking from my personal experience here because I've never been to an English-speaking country. If you're in the same situation, the only way for you to immerse yourself in the English language is by applying this simple, but powerful habit, I guarantee that you'll love the results. So do yourself a favor by start exercising your brain today. Click here to get some listening materials or if you feel like reading, 
click here for my reading recommendations. You can also find these links in the description below. What is the best way to improve your vocabulary? If you ask this question to English teachers or other English learners, they will tell you the same thing. They'll tell you that the best way to build your vocabulary is to learn vocabulary in context by listening and reading a lot. And I completely agree with that. That is the best way to increase your vocabulary. So this is common sense, right? Everybody knows that. This topic is so boring. But there's a problem. Common sense is not common action. Everybody knows how to improve their vocabulary. But most people don't do it because they spend too much time on things like social media and funny cat videos. Now, if regular listening and reading is a common practice for you, then congratulations, you don't need to watch this video. But if it's not a common practice for you yet, let me convince you to start listening and reading on a regular basis. I'm going to share with you two other benefits you'll get from applying this habit. I'm also going to share with you some listening and reading materials at the end of this video. So let's get started. The first benefit you'll get is intuition. What is intuition? Well, let's say that you come across a multiple choice question about English grammar. You look at the choices and you know immediately what the correct answer is. You don't know the grammar rule that explains it. There's no reasoning behind it. It just feels right. That's intuition. It comes from taking in a lot of input by listening and reading. Unfortunately, some people don't appreciate the power of intuition. They learn vocabulary in a very strange way. They don't learn words in context. Instead, they find a list of words and memorize the meaning of each word one by one. Now, this seems like a good idea. They're learning a lot of new words in a short period of time. There's only one problem with this. It's stupid. Just because we know the meaning of a word doesn't mean that we can use it. It's not enough. We also need to know how the word is used. Now, I'm sure that you already know this, right? You're not one of those people. You already know that it's much better to learn vocabulary by listening and reading. Because when you do that, you're not only improving your vocabulary, but also grammar, sentence structure, and so on. And over time, you will become an independent learner. It means that you have the ability to improve your English without help from other people. And that's really cool. Now let's talk about the second benefit of this habit. The second benefit is an increase in brain power. Just like how a muscle needs physical exercise to become stronger, your brain needs mental exercise to grow as well. Regular listening and reading is a great mental exercise. It improves so many brain functions. When you listen to someone speaking, you have to stay focused. This improves your attention. And if they're speaking really fast, you also training your brain to process information faster, which leads to better comprehension. Reading is great too. It improves your memory. When you read a novel, you need to remember lots of details like the names of the characters, their backgrounds, the plot, and so on. Some books even increase your intelligence. Reading certain types of books improves the way you think. And these are just a few benefits. There are so many other benefits that I didn't even mention here. Now you might be thinking, why should I care about my brain power? Well, because it will play a huge role in your English language development, especially if you're trying to improve your spoken English. For non-native speakers like you and I, speaking English requires a lot of effort. It places great demands on so many cognitive functions like memory, attention, auditory processing, reasoning, and so on. So if you want to speak English well, you're going to need to have a strong, healthy brain with lots of power. And by the way, if you're not living in an English-speaking country, this habit is a must. And I'm speaking from my personal experience here because I've never been to an English-speaking country. If you're in the same situation, 
the only way for you to immerse yourself in the English language is by applying this simple but powerful habit. I guarantee that you'll love the results. So do yourself a favor by start exercising your brain today. Click here to get some listening materials, or if you feel like reading, click here for my reading recommendations. You can also find these links in the description below. Last, let us discuss what is vocabulary. What is vocabulary? It is the set of words within a language that are familiar to a person. Always remember that a vocabulary usually develops with age and serves as a useful and fundamental tool for communication and acquiring knowledge. It is very important for us to know different words or vocabulary words for us to use in communicating with other people. Acquiring an extensive vocabulary is one of the largest challenges in learning a second language. That's why we always have vocabulary words in our ESL subject so that students like you can understand our topic more. Now class, what are the importance of vocabulary? Why do we need to study vocabulary? So there are five reasons to learn vocabulary for students. The first one, to express yourself better. Class, when you know how to express yourself better, you will be confident and you will be able to express or you will be able to say your ideas clearly. The second one, to understand better. Of course, if you know a lot of vocabulary words, then you can understand better, you can communicate better. Number three, think more logically. Because when you know a lot of vocabulary words, then you can think more. And when you think more, you boost your power of persuasion. You have the power to let people believe in what you are saying. And the last one, make a good impression, especially when you are doing business. When you know a lot of vocabulary words, you are confident to talk, then you can easily persuade the person you are talking to so you can leave a good impression. Last, let us discuss the different types of vocabulary one by one. So the first one, antonyms, which we studied already, two words with opposite meanings, example, young and old. The second type of vocabulary, homographs. Words that are spelled the same but have different meanings and pronunciation, like bow, bow. So these words are two different words with two different with different meaning and the same pronunciation. Next, homonyms, multiple meaning of words. Words that sound the same and have the same spelling but different meaning. So as you can see, class. Homographs, homonyms, the same spelling, the same sound, different meaning. But in homonyms, in one word, except example, but, there are so many other words or meaning of the word but. Unlike bow, there are only these uh, words that are the same, but the meaning is only one. But but, so many, so but like this and but like the animal. Okay, and so another meaning. Class, the fourth one is homophones. Words that sound the same but have different meanings and spellings like flower and flower. I always say to students that this word is read as flower, not flower, but flower. Next, we have multiple meaning words, homonyms. Words that sound the same and have the same spelling but have different meanings. Examples, bed and bed. And the last one that we have here, synonyms, which we have studied already. It means two or more words with the same or similar meaning. Example, number, numeral, figure, digit, amount, quantity. Different words with different spelling but the same meaning. Class, let us discuss the different ways of learning vocabulary words. 
So we have here number 1 to 16, but let's read number 1 first. Read, 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 and listen. So as you can see here in the picture, if you read a lot of books or when you listen to music or maybe when you're watching TV, you focus on listening or reading the subtitles, then there is a big chance for you to learn vocabulary words. The second one, track your vocabulary learning progress with your phone or book. It is very important for you to take down notes and look for the meaning of the word, especially if you do not know or you are not familiar with the word. Number three, have a word of the day, at least one or two words of the day. You can remember the word and remember the meaning and of course you will be able to use it. The fourth one, have a vocabulary list on the wall at home or office that can be easily seen by you because when you see it, you read it, you understand the meaning and of course you can use it. The next one is play games, word games of course in English. The sixth one, have a dictionary and thesaurus around you like you always do when you are at school. You can even use your phone to look at the meaning of the words. Number seven is to practice by speaking, okay? With yourself is okay or of course with your friends even in chat. And number eight, start a blog. This is if you want to uh, learn more and talk more about a lot of things. Next class, number nine, to translate words into your own language, which you always do in ESL or another subjects that you learn in English. Number 10, learn about English and American culture, which we always do in our school. Number 11, try vocabulary quizzes, which we are going to do at the end of our topic. Number 12, use English news broadcasts and other resources to hear news words in context, especially class because you are using social media a lot of time in your Facebook or Instagram. When you see English words and or when you hear um, English people talking with each other, then please pay attention and focus because you will learn from hearing. Number 13, correspond with an English friend. friend. So as I always tell you, you can always send me a message if you want to ask question. It doesn't matter if your um, English grammar is wrong because what matters is we understand each other and we use the vocabulary word correctly. Number 14, to write down new words, especially words that you are not familiar with. And try to look for the meaning of these words in your dictionary or in Google search. Number 15, use pictures. As I always do, I have the words and the pictures because um, students, especially uh, Learners of second language easily learn the second language if we use words and pictures together. And number 16, learn with other people. Speak English even with your friends. Do not be shy. Now class, we have here samples of vocabulary words that are being used in English. So these are 100 most common words. You can practice on your own by reading this one if there are words that you don't understand. You can send me a message in line, you can Google it, or you can uh, find the meaning or look for the meaning of it in your dictionary whenever you are convenient, okay? We now come to the end of our discussion and it's time for me to give you activity. And in your activity for this week, it's going to be an online activity which is called Word Wall Application. Just click the link for the online activity, which you can find in the Google Classroom account in our ESL subject. Finish the activity, and at the end of the activity, you can see your scores, screenshot your scores, and upload it in ESL album in our line group. Good luck, everyone! Class, we now come to the end of our discussion. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, you are free to send me a message in Google Classroom or in my personal line account. Stay safe, everyone, and do not go out of your houses if you don't have to. Goodbye!